This isn't science fiction. There are currently hundreds, perhaps thousands of test plots of GE trees already being grown in the open around the world. My name is David Suzuki. I am, by training and profession, a geneticist. And for 25 years, I had an active career in science, once having the largest genetics lab in Canada. I'm narrating this film because I'm concerned about the unseemly haste with which my colleagues and my peer group seem to be ready to rush in and begin to apply ideas in this revolutionary area, to apply ideas that I think are far too early to expose people either in our drugs, in our food, or out in open fields. Genetic engineering is the insertion of genetic material, or DNA, into the cells of a living organism, usually using a bacterium or a virus. The artificially inserted DNA, selected for a specific trait of interest, can be extracted from an entirely unrelated plant, animal, or microorganism. The result is a plant or tree that has been altered in a way that could never occur in nature nor could it be achieved through traditional cross-pollination or hybridization. Genetic engineering is a new and complicated field which often yields unexpected results. In discussions I've had with my fellow geneticists, they often say, listen Suzuki, we're just talking about DNA. DNA is DNA. What difference does it make what organism it comes from? We pull it out of this organism, put it into another, it's just DNA. They forget a fundamental fact. We study the genetics of organisms by breeding a male and a female of one species, looking at their offspring and breeding them through what is called vertical inheritance within a species. When you take a gene from one species and transfer that DNA into a totally unrelated species, that's a completely different kind of experiment. This is now called horizontal inheritance. We've never done that before and it is absolutely bad science to say that we can look at vertical inheritance and use the same ideas to explain what goes on in horizontal experiments. It's just lousy science. This one gene, one protein, one trait caricature of how genetics works, that's the whole foundation of the biotechnology industry, is a complete misrepresentation of everything we know about how genetics in complex organisms actually works. Biotechnologists think genes are genes. It doesn't matter where you stick them and they'll just function the way they normally do. Any geneticist who thinks about that should know better. Genes don't function alone. They function within the context of the entire genome. Nature acts on the entire genome because after fertilization there are whole sets of genes turned on and off in the proper sequence so that you get the development of a complete organism. So that whole orchestration is an integrated uh, genome that acts as a complete entity. To take a gene out of a fish and stick it into a plant means the fish gene suddenly wakes up and goes, where the hell am I? Who are all these other genes around me? Because you've altered the context within which that gene is found. It would be like taking Bono out of U2 and uh, putting him into the New York Philharmonic Orchestra and say, okay folks, play music. Well, you get noise of some sort, but nobody can anticipate what the, the sum total of that activity will be. It's just a mistake to think that genes act as if their traits are expressed regardless of where they exist. The promoters of this technology would have us believe that genetic engineering is somehow more scientifically precise than traditional forms of breeding of plants and animals, and that's simply not true. Genetic engineering is an inherently uncertain process. It's inherently hazardous. When genes from various flowering plants and bacteria and what have you are forced into the embryos of either our food crops or of, tree sp or of the cells from living trees, um, they don't know what's going to happen. They don't know where those genes will land and they don't know what effects it'll have on the underlying processes of gene expression 
that make a corn plant a corn plant or that make a poplar tree a poplar tree. One of the main problems is that those pushing the benefits of genetic engineering stand to gain enormously from it. Today, products of biotechnology are being incorporated into our food, sprayed onto our fields, and engineered into our medicines without our knowledge, with little public discussion, and with the active support and funding of governments. Even though there are profound health, ecological, and economic ramifications of this activity, the paper, timber, oil, and fruit industries are rushing ahead to genetically engineer trees. What we found through our research is that genetically engineered trees are truly the greatest threat to the world's remaining native forests since the invention of the chainsaw. Large paper, agriculture, and timber corporations are pouring vast sums of money into genetically engineering trees because they believe they will be more efficient and profitable. They hope to engineer traits so that trees kill insects. Trees resist toxic herbicides. Trees will have reduced lignin, the long fiber that gives rigidity to the tree and makes it difficult to manufacture paper. Trees that are sterile, producing no seeds, nuts, pollen, nectar, or fruit. The insertion into the cells of trees of the gene from a naturally occurring bacterium, Bacillus thuringiensis, that produces Bt toxin that kills insects, would cause every leaf, flower, fruit, or grain of pollen of the tree to produce the insecticide. Advocates claim that this would decrease the need for applied chemical pesticides because pests would be exterminated by eating the tree. But geneticists know from experience that using an insecticide in this fashion selects resistant insects, putting the industry on a treadmill of requiring an endless string of different, often more toxic, pesticides. The pesticide can't be washed off because it's in every cell of the genetically engineered plant or tree. Because of this, there is no specific target and no real limit to what or who can be harmed. 